Hello everyone, my name is Eri Pervulescu, I'm from Romania and I'm a GDC Entwine alumni. I'm working for the Romania Jewish community as a coordinator of national programs and, the, and coordinator of the Jewish community centers across the country. But now, I will not talk about my work now, I would like to tell you about my past and about my Jewish journey and how everything is connected with the beautiful building behind me. We are now in the synagogue of the Jewish community of Karan Sebes. I will tell you several words about the city. It's a small city in the west part of Romania with a population of 25,000 people. And uh, the, the synagogue was built in 1893 and was built just in 11 months. All the, all the work and everything was finished in 11 months. At that time, the Jewish community of Karan Sebes had something like 180 members. Between the First World War and Second World War, the po Jewish population of Karan Sebes arrived somewhere to 450, 500, 500 uh, members. That was the biggest number of uh, Jews who lived in Karan Sebes. After the Second World War, the number of Jewish population started to decrease because of the Aliyah, immigration, and because also many people passed away. And we are arriving to the beginning of 2000. Then the Jewish community had just several members, around 40, 50. During the years, part of them also decided to, to make Aliyah to Israel, part of them move to other cities and uh, remain something like 30, 30 Jews in the city. In, because the number, the number of the Jewish population was very small and uh, there here didn't took place any activities, the Jewish community decides to give the synagogue in the administration of the mayor hall and the mayor hall was supposed to turn it into a concert hall. So this happened in uh, 2011. And the synagogue was administrated by the municipality from 2011 to, to 2014. Uh, I told you all this in order to understand better my story and how I start to get involved in the community. So, after we, we are in 2014, I decided then something made me to want to get involved. And I said that I need to step in and to do something for the Jewish community. I was just 16 years old. So I remember that I, I, go to the, I go to the municipality and I asked the permission to organize a commemoration of the Holocaust in the synagogue. It was for the first time when such an event took place in this, in this small town. I got their approval, I got the keys of the synagogue and I start, f f the first thing which I, when I entered in the synagogue was to clean it because it was a big mess. The R hive, the, all the things inside of the synagogue was, in a, unfortunately in a very, in a very bad uh, shape, in a very bad situation. So after I clean it, I start to make posters, to make invitation, to invite a Holocaust survivor who will talk to the audience. I send invitation to all the high school, to all the, to all the schools in the city and around the city. And the biggest surprise was in the day of the event, when here in this synagogue arrived more than 300 people. And just to tell you that the, the seats in the synagogue are something like 250 to 170. So it was more people than the seats. And then we took the decision to organize two times, one, one time in the morning, another one, one round in the evening. So in that day, for the first time, was more, in one day, more than 500 people who came and visited the synagogue. This was because many people heard about the synagogue, heard about its beauty, about the amazing acoustic. But the biggest part of them didn't was even one time in the synagogue and was like a hidden jewelry and many of them wanted to discover it. So after this event, I tried to convince the mayor hall, the municipality to let me the keys in order that from time to time I will come and clean it and, uh, and uh, organize different things. And somehow they was agree. Then I thought that we need to do more. I try to reach out to members of the community. Part of them I knew, but was many others who, are, who didn't was any more active in the community. I, in this time, the community had just 10 active members. So I start to reach out to try to do different events. In the meantime, I asked the Federation of Jewish Community the approval that we will take 
back the synagogue with the help of the president of the closer Jewish community. We, we form a letter, we prepare a letter, we send to the mayor hall, and we ask them to give back the synagogue. They was agree, and we took back, the Jewish community took back the synagogue again. Never believed that this will ever happen. So, the synagogue came back to the community. I started to reach out to the members of the community, and uh, the big part of them responded they want to come. In the same time, I thought what we can do in order that this synagogue will have audience, will have people inside, not just, not just for the religious part, but also for the cultural part of the city, because this synagogue has a beautiful organ, uh, has an amazing acoustic, and we can do many things here. So, uh, I start to organize different events, concerts, exhibitions, book releases, and many, many people attend. Maybe also because of the synagogue, that it's so beautiful. And uh, then, was necessary some renovation for the synagogue. The, even if the inside part is very beautiful and it's in a very, in very good condition, but the outside was in very bad shape. Then I, I thought that we need to renovate it. I tried to ask help for the, from the municipality, from local authorities, from uh, different organizations, but unfortunately none of them couldn't support us with money and couldn't help us with the renovation. Then I, prepare, I reach out to a person who is now the conductor of the Stuttgart Opera, who was born in Karam Sebes, and I knew that he's coming every, every year here for, to spend time with his family. So I asked him if he's willing to do from time to time concerts for free in the synagogue. He accepted, and more than this, he came all the time with some colleagues of him from different operas around the country, also from outside of the country. And the, suddenly, the synagogue became a cultural place. Everybody knew that here, during the renovation, I was something like the administrator of the synagogue because I was also under 18 years old. So uh, in the moment when I became 18, 18 years old, I was elected by the General Assembly of the Small Jewish Community of Karansebesh as the president of the small community. Uh, it was a very big honor for me. I actually I didn't expect that people will offer me to be the president of the community. I thought that it's just, I'm just helping with the renovation and all the things, but it was other people who can be, who was had more experience and could be, but maybe better president than me. But they offer me, and I accept. I accept this position, and I was very, I was very glad that uh, they came to me with this offer. So for uh, almost two years, I was the president of the community. I think that the young, for sure, the youngest in Romania. And during this time, after I finished with the renovation of the synagogue, I took care of the cemetery to to clean it, to restore some of the tumble stones and things like that. And then I try to be focused on the Jewish part of the community, to try to reach out to the members of the community, to try to provide Jewish education and uh, religious activities. So I, I learned how to lead the prayers and I start to organize every Friday Kabbalah Shabbat in the synagogue. Sometimes it was one person, other time was two the attendants. In the end, I, t I told to the people, look, I will be every Friday there in the synagogue. If you want, you are welcome to come, to join, and to welcome the Shabbat together. If you don't want to come, it's totally fine with me. But you need to know that I will be every Friday there. So people start to come. People start, start to, 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 to create connection between them, to get to know again each other, and to create a real community. So if in the beginning we had four or five attendants, after one year, we succeed to have something like 25, 30 people who attend the, the, the prayers every Friday evening. And once per month to organize also Onyx Shabbat. When we, when we was organizing also Onyx Shabbat, we had something like 35, 40 people. The number of the members of the community arrived to something like 35, 36 members. So it was a very big row. And the community started to become very active. All the time when we had an event and, uh, or we was preparing an event, all the members came together to work, to clean the synagogue, and uh, to, to, prepare for, to prepare the event. People support the events also with money, also the, for the renovation. So really became, became a very strong and big family here. After, after, after this period, after we finished with the renovation of the synagogue, with the cemetery, to, I, after I started to create a connection between the members and uh, to establish a religious life, I uh, decided that I need to step back because anyway I was moving to Bucharest for the university and to continue my, to continue my studies. So uh, I resigned, was election, 
and uh, was elected a new president, also a very young person, a doctor who continued the work and still now the community is very active, they are gathering all the time, they are creating beautiful events for the city and uh, the Jewish community become, start to be, become to be very respectable in the city and very known for the beautiful events which they are doing. And more than this, everybody knows that when it's an event at the synagogue, for sure it's something, it's something, it's something very, very, uh, very unique and uh, a high level event. I mentioned before that thanks to this place, to this synagogue, to the, this small Jewish community, I get I, I am where I am today. In the in the same time when I was dealing with all the issues of the local Jewish community, I started to get involved in the national Jewish community, to be part of different programs, to get involved in the in the programs that are happening in the country. So after I moved to Bucharest, I start I start to work as coordinator of uh, national Jewish programs in Romania which are programs made by the Romanian Jewish Federation with the support of JDC and uh, which means that are programs which are happening in, in the same time in many cities across the country. And I will give you just one example of what I'm doing. Uh, for example, we have the Global Day of Jewish Learning called Keshet. And uh, in Romania, we have 39 Jewish communities across the country. So we are preparing a material on the topic of the Global, of the global Day of Jewish Study. We are sending it to all the communities and at the same time, the same day, almost the same hour in all the cities, in more than 30 cities, the members of the Jewish community are gathering together and one volunteer from them is, is uh, giving a lecture regarding the subject. So it's unbelievable what is happening here. For, for example, in the last edition of Keshet, which happened in 31 cities, was more than 1,500 people who attend this program. 100, 
1,500 members of the Jewish community, when the total Jewish population of the country is 7,000 members. So it's a very big number in comparison with the Jewish population of the country. And uh, this, uh, this is my work now. I, I told you that I will give you one example, but I, I must tell you about another, another project which I'm sure that uh, changed many lives and make, make, make the many members of our community happy. It's called uh, Light Delivery. On Hanukkah, with the support of the Romanian Jewish Federation and JDC, we are preparing packages with Hanukkiot, Hanukkah candles, dreidels, suganiot, coffee, tea. We are preparing around 600 packages. We are sending the packages in all the 39 Jewish communities across the country. Volunteers from the community are registering, are gathering together in the communities, taking the packages and delivering the packages in the house of the elderly, spending time with them, lighting them with the Hanukkah candles. This program is for the people who are not able to attend the uh, lighting of the Hanukkah candles in the synagogue, Holocaust survivors who are not able to go out from their houses. So in the last edition of Light Delivery, we, we visited in all over the country 650 elderly and we had more than 750 volunteers. So it's unbelievable what is happening here in Romania and uh, how these programs are changing the life of the uh, Jewish people here. Um, so I hope that you enjoy to hear my story. Now, because at the beginning I told you, I told you about uh, the that I also take, took care about the religious part. I will uh, put you a very short movie of uh, uh, with a part from the Kabbalah Shabbat, which I did many years ago in the synagogue. So thank you for watching it. Thank you, JDC Entwine, for the opportunity to share my story and uh, all the best to all of you.